In the past few videos, I've dropped on the new Volkswagen ID7, which I recently had for a whole week of testing. I've been getting a lot of comments, a lot of spam about it being an embarrassment that Volkswagen can reveal and release and introduce a new electric car in 2024 with such poor interior quality, a terrible outdated infotainment system, and a car that isn't 800 volts. And also other comments about that in China, you can basically buy a car that's like 10 years in the future, which has twice the range, three times the battery pack size, which is a million volts at half the price. That last, I think, is a grave exaggeration and not even close to the truth. But I'm going to talk about that in a different video. In this video, I want to talk about 400 volts versus 800 volts. And is 800 volts better? And guys, check out, I have a new background. Finally, I've updated my home office, my studio after shooting here for almost a year. So if you like the new setup, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button. And also if you like electric car content, if you like electric vehicle tests, which I do here on the channel, please be sure to hit that subscribe button and sound that notification bell. So the age old question, 800 volts versus 400 volts, which is better? I don't think just to get it out of the way, at the beginning of the video that there is one that is inherently better than the other. So the age old question is 400 or 800 volts better when it comes to electric vehicles? Well, to be honest and to get it out of the way at the beginning of the video, and I'm going to talk about this in depth through this video, and this video is more like a conversation with you guys than, you know, a video with production. I don't think inherently 800 volts is better than 400 volts. I think conditionally 800 volts can be better, but inherently I think it is very individual and down to the specific electric vehicle and the electric vehicle cost. So before we dive into that, the main difference between 400 volts and 800 volts is the battery pack voltage. And it's more like a range than a fixed number. So most electric vehicles with 400 volt batteries aren't 400 volts all the time. Sometimes they're 400 volts, other times they're closer to 300 volts. It all depends on the state to charge. So most electric vehicles, when they're full, they're around 400 volts. When the battery's empty or close to zero, they're 300 volts. This depends on the electric vehicle, but it's a range instead of a fixed number. Some 400 volt electric vehicles are even closer to 500 volts when full and closer to 400 volts when empty. It's more of a range. So with a 400 volt electric vehicle comes the underlying componentry or the architecture. All of the electric vehicle components, the drivetrain stuff and parts are also classified and rated at that voltage. And this is what we first saw when we first saw mass market electric vehicles, 400 volts. And it has its inherent advantages. Most of them being that most 400 volt components are off the shelf. That means manufacturers can go buy them from suppliers and they're cheap and they're mass produced. And you can just have a lot of different choices between different components. But there are also limitations with 400 volts, and that is mostly the charging speed. Because if we look at the CCS standard, which gives us a peak amperage of 500 amps over a short period of time, with a 400 volt battery, that means a peak charging speed of 200 kilowatts. So 500 amps over a short time period and 400 amps continuously, which is 
even slower. That's around 160 kilowatts. So those are the limitations with the CCS standard, the current standard. That may change in the future. In the future, they may, you know, up that certification to maybe... 600 amps, maybe 700 amps. Tesla, for example, with their proprietary superchargers doesn't follow the CCS standard. Even though they use a CCS2 plug here in Europe, they don't follow the standard because their chargers aren't CCS chargers. When the chargers are used by other electric vehicles, yes, they follow the standard, but with Tesla, they can do basically whatever they want. And that's why Teslas, even with 400 volt batteries, are able to get like 250 kilowatts because they bump up the amperage to way above 600, giving them 250 kilowatts. But this is the limitation of 400 volts and also the components are, are big. They also, you know, dissipate a lot of heat. And that brings us to 800 volts, which we first saw mass market with the Porsche Taycan a few years ago and the advantages is that you can basically run the same current at twice the voltage and get twice the charging speed or half the resistance and half the heat dissipation so that means you can either you know just have insane charging speeds or you can have closer to the charging speeds you get with 400 volt electric vehicles and have much smaller componentry like the the cables can be a lot thinner but the disadvantage of this is that 800 volts wasn't a standard. And that meant that Porsche, when they made the Taycan, they had to develop and build those components or have their suppliers do that for them. And that means more expensive components to get those advantages. With the Taycan, which is basically a no compromise vehicle, which is an expensive electric car compared to a lot of other electric cars, a lot more of that money when you purchase the vehicle can go towards that 800 volt technology. And also that means that Porsche can spend more money on having proper and good battery chemistry that can take that potential higher charging speed of an 800 volt architecture. And that's what we've seen with the Taycan. I've owned a Taycan now for two years. Before that, I had an Audi e-tron GT, which is basically built on the same platform. Like literally, it's the same car underneath, just with an Audi exterior and an Audi interior. Underneath, everything is the same. Everything is exactly the same as it is on the Taycan. And the inherited advantages of this platform is that as long as the battery is preheated, you're going to get that peak charging speed no matter what. You can, you know, precondition the car for 30, 40 minutes in summertime. You're going to get that peak charging speed. You can do it in winter. You can drive the car on the Autobahn for three, four hours at VMAX, connect to a charger. And even though the battery is going to be warm, it's still going to take that peak charging speed. And I'm talking from firsthand experience. I've done all of this. But this is because... Porsche or Audi have put money into the heat management, the battery management, and also the chemistry. That is not a given. So as long as the manufacturers spend money and resources towards the advantages of a specific platform, you can get the advantages. On the other hand, we have the eGMP cars. These are the Hyundai Ioniq 5, Ioniq 6, Kia EV6 and also the new EV9. Here, it hasn't been that straightforward. And first off, that is because this vehicle, like every other electric vehicle at 40, 50, 60, 70, 80,000 euros, is a compromise. And the compromise here is yes, we're going to get 800 volts, we're going to get that peak charging speed of 240 kilowatts, but we don't have as much money as Porsche with the Taycan towards battery management, towards thermal management, and also towards battery chemistry. And that means the battery is much more sensitive in these EGMP cars to get that peak charging speed. So with the Porsche, you're going to get that peak charging speed with a battery temperature between 30 and 50 degrees Celsius. You can hammer this car on the Autobahn at 250, 260 kilometers, hour after hour, charging session after charging session, connect to a charger, and you're still going to get that peak charging speed. Where with the eGMP cars, 
these have, in my test, in other tests around the world, been a lot more sensitive to battery temperature. So first off, that working operating window is a lot more narrow. And also, battery and thermal management has not been close to the level of what we see in the Taycan because preconditioning is not as good, it doesn't work as well. Again, I've demonstrated that in several tests here on the channel and that means you're not reliably going to get that peak charging speed in these EGMP cars as often as I've been able to in other 800 volt electric vehicles. So you may be thinking to yourself at that point, what's the, the point of 800 volts? Well, there are a few points. If you live in a climate where you know the temperature is closer to that optimal, say you live in a climate where the you know ambient temperature is 15, 20 degrees, you're always going to be in that operating window and you can connect to a charger. And as long as you don't drive it very fast or you don't hammer that EGMP car, you're going to get those advantages. But here in Norway, well, now in winter, it is cold and you're reliant on preconditioning. And on route preconditioning in these EGMP cars, they stop at below 20%. And that means if you want to utilize more of that, you know, range, the battery is going to cool down as the colder it gets. You're not going to get that speed. Again, I've experienced this firsthand. With software updates, management has gotten better, but we're still limited by the, the hardware, the battery chemistry, the battery management, the thermal management built into the, the, you know, the car itself. That cannot be changed with a software update. So we see now with the EV9, with what Hyundai, Kia have done is that they've actually dialed back that, dialed down that peak charging speed from 240 kilowatts to 210 and giving the car a flatter charging curve. And that has worked. So I've tested this car and you're more reliably going to get that peak charging speed and it works a lot better. But you may be thinking to yourself, if you're only going to get 210 kilowatts, what's the point of 800 volts? And I ask the same thing, because as I said earlier in the video, if you charge a car, which is 400 volts at 500 amps, you're gonna get 225 kilowatts peak charging speed, which is more than that 210. And even a 450 volt architecture battery at 400 amps, which is continuous, you're still just below 200 kilowatts of peak charging speed. So I think, in my opinion, that 800 volts from, you know, Kia Hyundai has been more of a gimmick. Because a few years ago, when I had an Audi e-tron, which peaked at 150 kilowatts. That car had a complete flat charge curve from zero to uh, to 79%. And that car, even though it only peaked at 150 kilowatts, it could actually charge faster than the Hyundai Ionic 5 when that came out with a peak charge speed of 240 kilowatts because that charging, charging curve was a, which was a lot more peaky. And also that Audi was a lot less sensitive because of the battery chemistry and also not the need for that high charging speed. It was a lot less sensitive to battery temperature and would get that charging speed a lot more reliable most of the time. And another thing about 400 volt electric vehicles is that yes, they charge slower, but that means you're going to have access to a lot more chargers to get that peak charging speed. There are a lot more chargers at 200 kilowatts or 225 kilowatts than there are chargers at 300 or 350 or 400 kilowatts. So at the end of the day, I don't necessarily think that 800 volts is better than 400 volts. It is very conditional. And what we've seen so far from a lot of these electric vehicles is that if the electric vehicle is a mass market vehicle like many of these EGMP cars, there isn't enough money put towards what makes the 800 volt architecture worth being 800 volts. For that, you have to go for more, much more expensive cars like the Porsche Taycan. So all this is going to be better in the future, but I think the limitation now is in battery technology and in battery management and in thermal management. So guys, let me know what you think down below. I've been wanting to talk about this subject for a while, but I didn't want to make it too complicated. I didn't want to dive too deep into it. This is actually my third take of this video because I think it just too easily gets too complicated. And yes, this is a complicated subject, but I think we have to try to talk about this on, you know, non-complicated terms 
if that makes sense. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please drop me a thumbs up down below. And for more car content, as always, please subscribe. See you guys. Sit down. Goodbye.